Hello, I'm Lim Ga Eun from IASA, and today I want to talk about my topic, democratization of education and technology. This topic is one of the most largely discussed topics nowadays, and many experts and many professors come out to TV or write some essays about it to share their own ideas with me. But today I would like to share you some different points, some points about my experience as a student. But before we move to our main topic, we should discuss about technological advance and social inequality. Historically, technological advance was always synonymous with, deep, with deepening social inequality. So technological advance drives a wedge between privileged group and less privileged group. So what is the difference between those two groups? I guess there is many factors to decide if the one is privileged or not, but there is no doubt that education is one of the main factors of it. So the different, one of the difference is ability to acquire new technology. Privileged groups have enough chance and money and time to be educated with new technology, so they can use the technology in the expense of less privileged to benefit themselves. However, less privileged don't have enough money and time and chance to be educated about new technology, so they don't really understand what's happening now but just do whatever they can for their living. So, we can come up to important point from here. To solve the problem of social inequality, one of the important things is democratizing education. So what does democratizing education means? It means that provides same opportunity and same educational resources to everyone, regardless to their gender, nationality, or their wealth. So this might be thought as a um, dream of an idealist because there is Yes, there is a geographical barrier. So it means that the child who lives in the middle of Illinois can't be educated, same with ch child who live in such kind of small town at the middle of the mountain, because it's unable to build a school at there, or it's unable to invite professors in there. However, uh, advance of technology can make that dream come true. So internet have been developed very fastly and we can use internet everywhere as long as we keep contact to it. And also there is many kinds of information in there and everyone, regardless to their gender or nationality or wealth, they can contact to that information and share the information or question to other people in the internet for free. So this is the main idea of technology and democratizing education. So internet can spread information beyond some kind of geographical barrier, even at free. So it's that every people can have same educational resources as long as it's uploaded to internet. And also there's something like AI tutors. So it's kind of concept that people can't even think as 20 years ago, but it became true. So nowadays, AI tutor can just analyze the student's studying pattern and recommend the studying resources that is good for the students. So this kind of technological advance and some kind of programs related to education makes us able to democratize education. So it's irony that technology that made the social inequality makes us to solve them. So let's move to our main topic. As a student, am I feeling some difference? Am I feeling that technology is really helping us to reduce social inequality and the gap of education? Actually, I still feel the gap of education because in Korea, students often go to some academy in Seoul rather than just studying in their own local because the academy in Seoul is much better. So we can just feel that even in this small country, we have geographical barrier and we often feel that child in Seoul have better educational environments than child who live in countryside. But however, what I felt um, that the technology might be really able to just break all the barriers about education is two cases. So the most um, 
The most popular case about technology helping the education is YouTube, actually. They, try, they like, tend to say that in YouTube there is a bunch of uh, good quality educational resources so that people can easily like, see the famous professor's lecture from their living room. Actually, that's a very good case about democratizing education, but I feel like there is something um, missing with YouTube. So they can't easily question back to the educators, so it means that communication between educator and the students is lacking. And as a student myself, I think that communication is main reason why people still prefer on offline education than online education. But uh, from these two cases, I found that that communication can be done with technology. So the first one is Kwanda. I guess many of you are not like very familiar with it, but to explain briefly, like it's some kind of Q&A platform, but based on AI programs. So if you have some mathematical problems that you can solve, you can just take a picture of it and upload to Kwanda, and Kwanda searches the same question from internet, and Kwanda can just like show you the answer or the link of the answer. So it means that you, c you don't have to put effort to Googling it. Actually, Googling was still the good way to find answer before, but it means that you have to put effort on it. You have to f like um, spend your time to find the answer or just find the page. But using Quanda, you can just picture it, and after like three or four seconds, you have the answer. So it can be some kind better than questioning the educators because Quanda doesn't have the things they don't know. And the second one was Ready and a program application called Santa Toy. So Santa Toy is an application that helps people to improve their toy scores. And it's kind of um, interesting because they analyze the person's like reading score and listening score and the pattern they like pattern they study and in listening what kind of accent they are weak at what kind of accent they're strong at so they just throw the person uh, most good kind of um, problems they can study so this is this is very interesting for me because I, just, I think that AI could never give us a uh, one-to-one -one mentoring or tutoring but it did so, Ready was one of the AI edutech company, and this company very interestingly really tutors the students. So, if the students doesn't study study well, they tell them to study, and if students study well, they give them the prize. So long, so long. So, I felt from these two cases that the technological advance and the trying to democratize the education to trying to provide same educational resources even in tutoring to all of the child have been made us to find out that the AI can what AI can do is not just providing information but also tutoring students and managing them so then um, actually I'm wanting to be a developer one day. I want to make some applications or like programs by myself to help the world. So I just thought about what should we do? So the first problem is that even now, um, internet is not spread all world. So even though the resources get I have a good quality and there becomes many edu technological programs if the child doesn't have connection to internet it means that they are just more um, there is more gap from child who have and child who not so the first problem is just making internet making everyone in world have access to internet and make sure that they have enough device and electronic electricity to have the internet and study with it and the second one is the quality of the resources so it's same in youtube and it's same in every educational platform but if experts are more able to share their knowledge online then it will be more better and 
It will also help other people trust about online educational resources. So I hope that one day there will be more experts that share their knowledge online. And also, for thirdly, I have thought about more real realistic educational resources. So there's something called metaverse or holography or like VR or so long. So it's not just maybe one day student will not feel the the internet video, but just the real teacher teaching them and in front of them. So I think that may be possible if those kind of technology get more advanced. So um, eventually, if we are able to really make more realistic educational resources, then it's, it's not just a democratization of education, but democratization of experience. One day, everyone will be able to have same experience for free, maybe, regardless to what condition they are. So I think this is the real um, meaning about equality. The equality doesn't just mean that having same condition in testing, but it means that they should have same experience and they should have same chance to like acquire their knowledge and develop their ability. So before closing, I would like to say just one word. So as we are going through first technology, we should not tech first industrial revolution, we should not think about how fastly we should develop the technology. But where should we go? What's our final location of technological advance? And there's no answer about this question, but I guess clearly there's just one of the answer is that now technology should be developed for society. Technology should be developed for everyone, not just privileged group. I will try my best to um, make this kind of future and I hope that you guys will one day join too. Thank you.